Thank you, thank you all. Um, I'm Ray Mitchell, and I'm a proud member of the WordPress community, and also a proud member of a, a smaller, lesser known part of the community, um, Black Press. I will take a moment to introduce you to uh, a couple of members of our big and growing community. Destiny Fox Hanno, George Woodard III, and Maestro Stevens. So in preparation, I've got 10 pounds of questions, but only, uh, only have enough time for a five pound bag worth of questions. So I'm gonna ask these guys to be kind of brief, um, answer the questions as fully as you can, but be brief. Um, first, because it's a word camp, I'm gonna ask the official word camp question. If you would introduce yourself, and tell us what you do in WordPress. Mr. Stevens. The lights are pretty bright. Should have worn my sunglasses. Hey, my name is Maestro Stevens. Uh, I'm a brand webmaster. I have a creative agency. I build websites for the WordPress, obviously. Uh, and I love branding. Um, I used to skateboard as well, too. So we didn't rehearse this. Probably should have. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is George Woodard. I am a marketing consultant and WordPress web developer. I have my own agency by the name of L Squared Media Group. I'm based out of Houston, Texas, by way of Alabama. I'm a Southern boy by heart. Um, this is actually my second time speaking at WordCamp. Last year, I spoke uh, to represent the underrepresented in tech. So when this awesome group of people came with this idea, of course, I was like, heck yeah, let's, let's do this. So glad to be here, glad to see everyone. I do have my shades, but I'll leave them in my bag. Um, I'm Destiny Kanno, coming to you all from Tokyo, Japan. I am a sponsored um, contributor by Automatic, working in the training team. Um, yeah. Woo! We work on Learn WordPress. Check it out later. Um, that's my shameless plug. But yeah, uh, I'm very uh, excited to be here. So thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, Dustin, definitely hold on to the mic. So as you might have been able to guess from the title of the presentation, we're going to talk a little bit about black press and uh, black professionals. So can you talk about the black, pe black press ecosystem and how it came to be? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so... I, within Automatic, I also helped co-found our Black Employee Resource Group, Cocomatic. There's a bunch of Coco Magicians in here too. <laughs> um, and this idea of you know building community internally um, really inspired us to branch out further. So um, a co-founder of uh, B Black Press, Naisha Sweet, who also is a former automatician, and I just kind of came together and we're like, how can we think about this on a broader scale? How can we impact more people? Um, and we have some ulterior motives as well that I'll, I'll share with you. But essentially in 2022, we started having discussions with other um, black professionals in the WordPress space. Um, and you'll see on our website, blackpresswp.com, that um, there'll be four uh, co-founders listed. So that's myself, Naisha Sweet, Ali Nimitz, and Joe Simpson, who's helping organize this for camp for y'all too. Um, and we really came together with this mission of, yes, creating a space for black professionals to network, connect, build community, um, mentor, share opportunities, um, and really build a safe space to foster that. Um, but we also had a goal that's not um, yet realized, but we hope to, of bringing the future generations into WordPress, um, specifically hitting up um, HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities, and, and going beyond just that too, like what are the colleges and like Africa doing or other countries, right? But bringing in the global youth, black youth, um, into WordPress at an earlier stage through education. All right. Cool. Yeah, so you talked a little bit about the community nature of it, um, and you kind of alluded to um, membership outside of the U.S. Can you talk a little bit about the group's makeup um, and, and where the members actually do come from? Yeah, so you can come from anywhere in the world. Uh, we 
you know, our mission is to connect folks that identify as being part of the black diaspora. And so that includes me living in Tokyo, that includes people, uh, black folks in, in Europe, in the US, like we definitely don't see black press, although it was, you know, founded in North America as being a, you know, US or Western um, group, we want to ensure there are connections fostered um, throughout the world. And we do have folks um, coming from like Ghana, uh, from the UK, some of them spoke today. So we, that's really our mission in, in earnest. All right, cool. Well, Maestro, I'm going to ask you the next question. Um, can you talk a little bit about the culture of Black Press? How has the community contributed to who you are, uh, your business, and to your place in the WordPress community? The culture of black press. Well, first of all, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm probably gonna be one of the comedic reliefs in this panel right now. Um, I feel like I should be able to be myself. Um, and that's what black press for me was about. I will definitely say that the culture was welcoming when I first entered. Um, I would definitely say Destiny uh, just gave me so much insight and as well as just gave me an opportunity to be able to have meetups and you know to, to do other things like that. So, but the best part about it, I would say the culture is the fact that we we all are here right now. And to me, this is history in the making. You know what I mean? Like these lights are really getting on my nerves. I should have had my sunglasses. I was trying not to be that guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not gonna call people out, but we even had some people on CP time coming through. Listen, the culture is real. And I'm saying this to say, because if we can't do that, if we can't, if I can't call George out of some CP time, this ain't, you know, listen, and I'm gonna pass the mic. Where my, where my towel at? I'm ready to get hot, so I can sweat. We gonna take them to church. And that's what the culture about black press is, is you take them to church, but we do it in the WordPress way. So I'm a fan, I'm in love. This is, this is my family, this is, these are my people. Yeah. Um WordPress has always been about community and extending um, this project to community. And there's definitely a big sense of partnership and collaboration. And I'm going to ask George this question. As a member of Black Press, I've, you know, as an actual member, not just a moderator, but a member, but uh, I've seen you and I've seen many other members to act c collaboratively as teachers and partners and, and, and guides. Right. I'm not sure you alluded to the welcome that you've received. Why do you think that's such a big part of black press um, for you and for the other members of the community? Um, I mean, when you come into any type of group, you're looking for some sense of belonging. And specifically in tech, you know, minorities make up less than 7%, even though we're 13% of the overall US workforce. So when you're coming into groups like this, you're trying to find a tribe of your own, somewhere you feel some sense of belonging. So the whole goal behind Black Press is to bring minorities and unrepresented in tech overall to have a space where, you know, you're not walking into these camps. Like, this is huge, you know, you're walking in, you see hundreds and hundreds of people and you know nobody. And you're like, if you're not confident enough for someone who just doesn't feel comfortable in a big space to be able to talk to people you don't know, you want to find somewhere you can do that. So that's the purpose with Black Press, is having that type of group where, you know, hey, come on in, you know, you have a tribe, you have a place to sit, somewhere that you feel belonging. And having individuals around you, you know, Maestro, we have Miss Destiny over here, being all the way in Japan, but still, you know, having those people to guide you. I mean, even down to the co-founder, Mike Little, we get a chance to talk with him and just getting that type of mentorship having that type of organization where you have someone around you that can just help guide you through your career. And even just from a networking aspect, you know, you want to, one of the articles I recently wrote for Master WP is about access, having access to opportunities, being able to meet the people who have access to those opportunities to help you further your career. So the whole purpose of this collective is to help more people underrepresented in tech to have access, to have a sense of belonging, to feel like when they come into tech, they have somewhere to be, rather than getting burned out by just trying to fit in somewhere they don't feel like they fit in. Yeah. So That's definitely an interesting comment. I mean, um, a lot of people have the experience, particularly if you're in a minority group, and I use that phrase, um, rather than underrepresented minority group, sometimes you're just the only one. Um, I can think back to being in elementary school, and if you look at the class picture, 
everybody sitting in front, you can definitely pick yourself out of the picture, right? So coming to a, a WordCamp and being able to see people, and still, you know, we have pretty good representation. And I see over the years that I've been coming to US, um, yeah, I guess, what is it, 2015 was the first one. Didn't get to go to that one, but 2016 I got to go. And just seeing faces and be able to wave at people, hey, I see you there. And being able to kind of come together and seeing the numbers increase over the years, I think has been a good experience. And this being kind of a foundation, it's actually maybe a little more active effort to grow the population. So I see that. So I'll ask a question and I'll toss it to anybody who may answer or who hasn't had to turn a little bit, maybe Destiny. Um, black press serves a black community, but it's not exclusive, right? Um, that's unique. It's black press, we've got the black t-shirts on, but it's not really an exclusive community. How does the community manage to balance the interests and needs of its black members, but also welcome and, and embrace the members of the broader WordPress community? Yes, this is a, a well-asked question for sure. Um, and I would preface it by saying black press, as you noted, is, is not exclusionary, but it is black by priority, right? And this is a space we are building to help amplify, empower black professionals within the WordPress space. But that can't only be done from within. We also need the support of our allies who can also beat our drum with us and you know, share those other opportunities that we might not be privy to or provide that mentorship um, in a way that is um, with shared language, with shared mission, and also um, like in celebration of an effort to just, in general, increase, the, um, expand the touch of WordPress, right? All right, any else yeah. Because it is, it, it is black press, but it is definitely not exclusively black. Um, and having that additional seasoning helps too. Um, you know, it just makes you know, salad taste better when you have more than just plain lettuce. There you go. So uh, it, it's been interesting, at least in my, in my experience. So. Yeah, um, I, I, I agree with everyone uh, up here. Just having you know, people that you can reach out to in the community that might not necessarily be in the Black Press crew, but also that wants to champion our mission. I mean, you know, we all have to survive with relationships somehow. So just being able to have those allies outside of the organization that say, hey, you know, we're with you, we hear you, we uh, agree with your mission, we see you, you know, being able to team up and partner, that's crucial. I mean, you, you can't get through life, period, just by being in one silo. You have to learn to branch out, and you never know what those opportunities may bring. So yes, having our allies are, is extremely crucial in this case, not only just for black press, but black and tech and just people in general. So yes, we need our allies to help us with this mission to further along, to partnership, to grow. You know, um, maybe there is some training out there that we might not necessarily have access to that some of our allies might have access to. And having those type of partnerships are just vital for, for growth of this organization. All right, and I think growth is an important uh, component because it's nice to see you guys, but I know that there are a lot more people here that are not necessarily participating and not necessarily just at the WordCamp, but larger. So I'll ask you this question, Maestro. In terms of communicating the message, um, what do you think or how do you think that we, Black Press, can do a little better job at communicating our message? And what are some asks that we can ask the audience to do to help communicate our message? I think this is the start, just being here. I mean, while everybody's been talking, I've been looking at everybody's eyes. Like, I'm an eye looker. I'm looking at everybody's eyes right now. And I'm saying this because, you know, being able to see you and you've been able to see us, um, I think that we definitely need to really, so for example, um, I met somebody yesterday and we were all taking our group picture and we, um, we just grabbed this random 
you know, person, this random black man. He had no idea that black press has even existed. Next thing you know, he's hanging out with us, you know, um, and we're just going and, and chilling when kicking it with him. And that's how I feel like we need to continue to just keep, um, like we're going back to the allies, we have to keep continuing to ask for help, ask for support. Um, I know that Destiny, I, um, and a few others as well, uh, um, and Ken and, and Ali, they're not here. And I'm gonna shout them out, for real, for real. See, it's, it's about that. I try to shout out everybody I can, as much as possible. Show love. I think that Black Press, we need to do that a lot more. I know that we have um, the website, which I hope everybody goes to, everybody should know the website. Uh, we, we did some highlights, we've highlighted um, you know, ourselves. I think that we definitely just need to continue to amplify you know, our voices. Um, and I feel like this whole place should be filled. I mean, I, I can speak for myself. I didn't promote like 15 minutes or 30 minutes beforehand just asking, hey, are you coming in here? Coming, are you coming in, coming in? I feel like maybe we could have done that. Am I wrong? That's reasonable, that's reasonable. So it's just, you know, I'm calling us all out. You know, I'm calling myself out. I need to do better. And I'm gonna be honest, you know, um, for a while I had kind of backed off for a little bit because uh, I just got burnt out, I got overwhelmed. But when I got back in it, it felt like home again. And it was really, really great to just be able to see like it grew. And every single time somebody's new is coming in. And then I see in the chat, welcome this person, welcome that person, welcome this person. So if you are not black, it does not matter. You belong with us, you know, especially if you support. And that's something I think that we definitely need to be able to help out a lot more with. Thoughts, George, Destiny? Um, I mean, he said it. You know, just being able to be more vocal, be more out front, uh, you know, have, having more of us on these panels, um, even the speakers in the different sessions, you know, letting everyone know like we're here. Um, you know, myself, I tried to, to his point, I tried to tweet about stuff, but, you know, we all get busy, things happen, but we have to do better about that, you know, being more proactive about our uh, exposure. Um, and it works as a two-way street. You know, we have many of us working many different facets within the WordPress community. So, you know, reaching out to our allies and say, hey, this is something that someone has going on that's real big that we think should be highlighted. Making sure that announcement gets out. And just overall being better about just, you know, letting people know that it's a lot of people out here doing a lot of different things for a lot of good causes whether it's solving tech problems or just volunteering in general, and just making those things known so you will know that these people exist, these causes exist, these products exist, these services exist, and just everything that's being done within the black press community, just making sure that thing is out there and in front of the community. Yeah, and I think that definitely is, a, is one thing that Destiny is a big champion of, celebrating our successes and prompting people to say what you're working on and say what's good and, and share it. And I think it's just a matter of seeing the small successes and the big ones, but seeing those successes over time encourages you and inspires you to push a little bit harder uh, to move forward. So a as the queen mother of the panel, tell us, <laughs> tell us why and tell us how, right? Because you, you, all right, so now it's time to thank Destiny, but um, you put a lot of time and effort. <laughs> into keeping us going, so. I, I wanna personally say yes, Destiny, you, um, your efforts a lot of times in our chat, you know, highlighting people, making sure that we are speaking out about what we're doing, what everybody's doing, whether it's big or small, that effort does not go unnoticed. So I will, okay. uh, I'm bad at taking compliments, so thank you. <laughs> we can do this for the rest of the time, because no, I think we're gonna finish not. early. <laughs> I will shrink. <laughs> um, I, but I, I just, I f hope y'all are feeling just like the love that we're trying to build in this community, the support that we're throwing out there for each other, being vocal about it as well is really important. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think of myself as like um, a community builder. That's what I do in the in the training team with, for the WordPress community at large, and it's a joy in my life to be doing that. So. Yeah, um, kind of one thing about that is like mm, setting up the space for it, one, and trying to follow up. So like small steps too. I, I, like we're all talking about like, um, the comments like made me really flustered, sorry. <laughs> um, 
how we felt like we could have done better too. Like we also can't be too hard on ourselves because we, we do have our other jobs. This is, this is volunteer work. So also just t celebrating those little wins is, is really helpful um, to keep us going. Um, so yeah, and I, I always love hearing y'all stories <laughs> whenever it comes up. Yeah, um, celebrating successes and we celebrate big and small, but also it's not participation trophies. Um, I think part of it is uh, maybe it's part of the black nature, but yeah, you'll get cut if you're, you're not doing your, your role. So yeah, you'll get clowned occasionally in, in the chat. We do that often too, but uh, it is in the spirit of lifting and building each other up. Um, and you talked about this potentially being a model for other groups as well. Um, we're laying out a process and other affinity groups can maybe adopt some of the principles that, that we've had. Um, we have a very, very, as we've alluded to, a very, very active Slack channel. Um, we've built a website to kind of make things a little bit more public facing. Um, but it is a growth process for us over the last couple of years. So, um, winding down, I'm winding down. Let me see if I've got anything else in here. Uh, no, I'm not going to say that one because I'm saving that for the last question. Um, I guess also talking about other groups and other unrepresented groups talk often about allies and we definitely have our share. Um, would you like, uh, at the risk of forgetting or naming somebody, do we want to talk about the types of allies rather than just specific names? Anyone? Sure. Listen, I'm not afraid. Uh, Michelle has helped been, been significant in my growth. Joe has been significant in my growth. Um, Nye helped me get, you know, when Stina. Um, I got spot, I mean, George, I mean, I can't, I mean, I can keep going, the, name, the names can keep going down. I'm just giving give you clear examples of people who have been significant in my growth of understanding that, you know, this is a family, this is a community. Um, and I know we were, you know, we were mentioning allies, but I look at all the people as allies, you know. That's why I started off with Michelle, because obviously Michelle's not black, right? We know that. Um, she, got some, she, she, she got some blackness to her, though. You know what I'm saying? You, listen, you come at her the wrong way, she's going to come back at you now. Uh, if you know Michelle, but I mean, it, there's just so many other people that I would say helped, whether they're a person or whether they're a company. So that's why, you know, for instance, um, GoDaddy. I'm shot them out. They're the reason why I'm here. You know, as far as, you know, paying for some, paying, paying helping me pay for some sponsorship. Um, so it was, you know, WP Tavern, you know, I can go down the list. I'm just being honest with you. Like, if I can't be honest with you, we got to hide this stuff. Cause that's the problem with WordPress sometimes. We're not honest with ourselves. We're not honest with ourselves and we're not, we're not get showing love when we have the opportunity to do so. So that's why I'm saying like, you know, whether it's an ally, whether it's somebody who is a business, a company, a, a sponsorship, it doesn't matter, whatever the case is, I just want to thank you. If I haven't said your name, trust me, you in my heart. And I still thank you anyway. I just want to like plus one this idea of like the transparency and in that like sharing these processes. That's kind of another reason why sometimes you feel like you have to build a, a separate space to to be able to shed light to those things. So like as an ally, definitely coming in and sharing whatever opportunities you have. But um, kind of switching back to what Ray was saying about how they can also take learnings from what we're doing and tie it into their community is like a, to me a form of like transparency and knowledge sharing that we can all give each other as well. All right. I'm going to ask Maestro to bring us home since, since he is a, a passionate advocate for black press and all that is black press. How would you recommend someone to get started? What's the easiest way to dip their toe? in the black press pond. What's their next step? I'm gonna conjure up my inner Bernie Mac. <laughs> let me tell you something right now, let me tell you something right now. If you wanna get in the black press, you better go to the website. I'm telling you right now. You go to the web, what's the website? Blackpresswp.com? Right, right there. That's all you gotta do. I'm telling you right now. You go to the website, you sign up, you feel the button. They got Slack chat, we got everything. That's all you gotta do is just go to the website. Is that simple enough for you, Ray? I think that works. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I, I've had a good time. Thank you, Destiny. Thank you, George. Thank you, Maestro. I'm Ray Mitchell. I think we're done, except for the question taking. And, and please address the person you want to answer to the question. I have a, is it on? Is this on? Okay, it's on. Uh, I have a question about the WAPU, the Black Press WAPU. Uh, what was the inspiration behind it? Well, I'm going to leave somebody else to answer that question because I just found out recently what, it, what the significance oh. was, too. Oh, my gosh. Um, if you haven't seen our WAPU yet, please go to wapu.com or whatever the site is and look at it. It's Major Poo, um, which is based off of, like, HBCUs um, typically have drum lines and we have majors. Mm. And so you'll see that inspiration of the drum culture um, in that. So that was the inspiration. And I'm gonna do a shout out to Channing Ritter who was um, previously in the Open Verse um, team. She helped design our shirt. She helped Ally. <laughs> she helped design that WAPU with us in collaboration with us. And yeah, go check it out. It's really cute. We wanna get swag sometime. <laughs> Another question? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, curious on your thoughts on, on this uh, from, from all you, really. Um, you know, I'm from San Diego, you know, and like our word camps in San I mean, when I was a kid, you know, like San Diego is about 12% black. Now it's like 6% black, right? So diversity is not like that, you know, for gentrification, really like, you know, marginalizing, you know, the, the communities that we have there. But like our word camps, you know, <laughs> for years, our word camps was like, one dude, various, you know, various Smith coming down from Riverside, you know, to our word camps. It was like our token black dude, right? So like for, for like for us, like how do we like, you know, kind of increase that, that community without marginalizing, tokenizing, uh, make it feel like we're like trying to hit quotas, right? Like how do we increase that diversity, you know, like going forward, like increasing that, that community in, in a community that is like increasingly diminishing, right? I was kind of curious about your thoughts on that. Well, I know one of the things which actually brought me into the Black Press crew was HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities. I myself was an HBCU graduate. Graduated from Alabama A&M in 2008 and 2017. I got my master's in computer science. And uh, to your point, with um, you know having local meetups, being able to tap into that pipeline. Um, my personal experience in grad school was my time to study WordPress. It's all self-taught, but I had no one in my local community, I'm originally from Huntsville, Alabama, no one in the local community who had any knowledge of what WordPress is. So having, now I live in Houston, Texas, you know, having the meetups, being able to reach out to like PV, which is Prairie View University, uh, Texas Southern, any other HBCUs, or even going to the inner cities. You know, a lot of um, young black kids, myself growing up in the inner city of Huntsville, you know, having a computer was a luxury. You know, a lot of kids don't get a chance to get access to that type of stuff. And exposing them, just going out and show them, you know, instead of spending 10 hours on an iPad in front of it, you need to learn how it works. You know, exposing them to that type of stuff, creating that pipeline into inner city kids, HBCU students, to give them the opportunity to understand that tech is out there. You know, you don't have to pick up a basketball. You don't have to go be an entertainer. You can be a programmer. You can be a developer. If you have a creative mind, be a designer. Um, you might not have any of those tech skills, but you can be a QA. You could be a project manager. You know, there's so many different facets of this job in the WordPress community that many of black and brown kids and just underrepresented altogether don't even know exist. And just reaching out to uh, those type of mediums. You know, myself being an HBCU grad, that's one of the things I brought to the table is that the HBCU community is such a closely guarded community because of the reason HBCUs were started in the first place. So as someone who's an HBCU grad, I have that access to be able to say, hey, you know, here's an organization that's out here trying to represent black and brown people in the tech community. And we want to give more exposure to black and brown kids in school, whether it's in the elementary level all the way up to the collegiate level and um, let them know like you don't have to go be an engineer if you don't want to you don't have to feel forced into that there's other ways that you can you know explore that creative mind to have a different career so 
I mean, there are so many different ways to do it, but I know with us, HBCUs and the inner city kids, that's something that we're actively trying to champion to create a pipeline to bring more of them into this space so they have exposure. And not even just WordPress, this is just one instance, just in tech in general. You know, there's many in the black press community, you know, WordPress isn't the only thing they do. They can do full stack development. You know, some may have cross platform development, AI development just anything to help them break into tech and know that these opportunities are out there that you can build a career um, working in tech and have fun doing it too. Yeah, I think to, to that end, uh, I'm, I'm definitely indebted to WordPress. Uh, I've been doing it for a while and started my company uh, for $250. Shout out to DreamHost, one of our sponsors, but I bought a domain name, got a year of hosting. I bought a theme from ThemeFar, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> But that's how I started it, right? We have the phrase, or we talk about uh, democratizing publishing, and that's what WordPress can do, but people have to know that. And the way that we get more people to be a part of our democracy, to have the opportunity to still today, you can start your business for $250. So it's actually cheaper than it was 10 years ago, right? The only way you can do that is to get more people involved in the democracy by sharing WordPress and helping that local small business helping that nonprofit to get rid of that janky Wix site that they put together and give them something that they can work. And when I talk to clients, I say, you know, I work with WordPress, you know, something that the PTA and the Boy Scouts and the little old church ladies use to build a website, but NASA and Rolling Stone and Harvard Business Review and New York Times use this as a backbone and it's the same thing that you can use. So getting people to understand that there's opportunity through WordPress is something that, whether you're in black press or not, if you're a WordPresser, you should be spreading the gospel of WordPress, right? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a WordPress evangelist, so I, next question. I'm sorry, I did just want to underline that, you know, our shared language is WordPress, right? So that we can bring that in any community. And I, I don't know if anyone saw, but just down the hall, there's like blacks in government, another convention. Why aren't we yelling about WordPress <laughs> <laughs> the um, convention yeah. right now too, right? So taking your WordPress, our shared language, and seeing who's willing to hear is a way of bringing people in, right? So I have kind of a two-part question. My name's Courtney Robertson. I work at GoDaddy uh, as a developer advocate, and I get to, as part of that, contribute to the training team with Destiny. Um, and I've been doing so for oh, a, a while, we'll say. Um, I first met some of this crew, George, you and I connected when I was teaching my underserved, underrepped high school kids that were being paid as summer interns to learn WordPress. Um, and in that boot camp experience, George and I connected kind of along those ways and some of the other people that came together that are now a big organizing force of uh, black press. Destiny, I would like to continue collaborating on outreach to let organizations like this know about the work that's happening on LEARN because I see that there is an avenue, whether it is through boot camp programs, this one, my kids were getting paid. They weren't paying to be there. They were, getting, they were high school kids getting paid. And, and Joe introduced MC Them uh, in Philly, uh, which is just amazing. I wanna continue collaborating with you on maybe some outreach to programs like that so that we can foster continuing the education and awareness. But I guess maybe the next question, wearing my other hat as GoDaddy, uh, our, we have, similar to Coco Press, we have uh, GD Black in Tech. Would Black Press like to come and kind of present to maybe groups like that, employee resource groups, hey, here is what's going on in the WordPress community and perhaps how you could get involved? Because I would really love for you to do that. <laughs> Mama. <laughs> oh, any, any. Auntie. Um. <laughs> So definitely in our Slack, we have an opportunities channel. So if you're like, hey, I think this is a great collaboration opportunity, we would like to have some folks come and speak, you know, time permitting. Um, yeah, we want to hear about that. We want to see, because we don't know everything. We don't, we, all, we don't know all black people either. So like, we want to be introduced. We want to know who they are. We want to share our space. Um, and so I would say, yes, let's continue those conversations. Um, and what I have been intentionally doing is like when I started um, helping folks put on like online sessions is I would cross post them to the Learn WordPress um, online workshop meetup as well. Cause that's also exposure, right? This cross posting, a little bit of mixing. And then people are like, oh, that was 
brought on by black press, what's that? And then I'm like, yeah, hooked another one. So <laughs> um, I think those parts where we can, you know, I, I don't know if there's a better phrase for this, uh, kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> I'm sorry, birds. I'm metaphorical. <laughs> um, let's keep talking about that because I think, you know, our time is limited and precious and we want to make the most of it, out of it. Hello, great, great panel. My name is Alvaro Gurdian, and I work for a Spanish language media company called La Noticia, and not just for my company, but also fellow publishers that I know across the country. Uh, I really love seeing this because we struggle to find talent that has both the technical competency and the cultural competency. So I heard a little bit about uh, how to help other um, affinity groups get started. I just want to get down to the concrete part. You know, how do we do it? And because we got to find these people. I, th I think that, well, bienvenidos y gracias por visitando. Um, I think the opportunity is there. I mean, it's a template. I mean, and the tools are out there and they're free. WordPress is free. Slack is kind of free. Um, it's really time and being willing to get together. Um, yeah, so I'm a Christian and we often say, uh, where two or more are gathered, uh, things happen, right? Two more Latinos, two more women, two more whatever get together. There's power in that number. And if those two tell two more, I can't do my you know, exponential math, but you can understand the process, right? Um, so it is something that we can talk to you about. It's something that you can see for yourself by coming and joining us. And uh, I guess in the technical space, George would say it's R&D, rob and duplicate. <laughs> it's the opportunity to do this, right? So yeah, I would encourage it. It would at least help me with my Spanish a little bit if I can get into another group. So, so to your to your point, um, to your question, because I know I don't think she's in here, but I got to shout out uh, William and Aida too. Um, and the reason why is because we've been talking about kids and helping out, and they do a lot in the community. And as a matter of fact, if it wasn't for them, I would have felt stranded in Europe when I was a speaker. Um, Aida speaks Spanish as, as, as far as I know, and William is black. They are a combination. So if you were, and, she, and they're in black press, right? So I'm just trying to make it more practical and realistic. You know, if the ally, you know, um, modeling, as you had mentioned. Um, I don't know how many people speak Spanish in, in the black press, you know, community. Um, now I had to raise her. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta learn. But I'm saying to say, like maybe we, well, we have, well, make the site bilingual. You know, and our first mode is to make it Spanish. You know, and that way we're 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 uh, we're, we're adding more to what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? But I definitely would suggest you you uh, reach out to Aida. I'm uh, gonna guess last question because I, I guess see the uh, probably the last question. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. Um, so you talked about the kids and you talked about making stuff and advocating in different businesses and things like that. What about, and Maestro, we already talked about this yesterday. What about that one person, man or woman, who in a different career and found that they wanted to do something else and they don't know how to get started or that person who's been training and putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, and then they find a way to you know what, let me try it, but I don't know what resources I need or how to get started because it's easy to fail and then be like, I'm good. So what would you say to that person who is trying to get in, especially if they are a person of color or somebody who's black? Like, what would you say to that person? Keep going. Uh, persistence. Uh, you know, no, no battles won overnight. Um, personally, you know, I'm not the strongest developer in the world, but I've worked along some very bright minds. And if I would have quit, I would not have made it to year 12, which is where I'm at now. So it's really, I mean, that's kind of the, the spirit of Black Press too, is having that accountability to help push you to keep going. You know, we all get beat up, we all get discouraged, failure is a part of the process, but having a community to rally around you in those moments to help lift you up and keep you going, you know, that's, that's something you need to be around. Um, but really, it's just persistence. Keep moving. Um, even with switching careers, uh, one of the other black persons, Caleb, a good friend of mine, he actually was a mailman at one point. And then he, in his downtime while delivering mail, 
studied WordPress to now work at Penske. So, I mean, if he had given up, just imagine where he could be. That's just the, the overall model. You just have to keep going, but also get around people who have that same collective mind that's willing to encourage you to keep pushing along. Because, I mean, in any job, any career, any profession, you're going to hit walls, you're going to fail. I mean, honestly, I remember as a kid, somebody told me, like, I hope you fail, because that's how you learn to get better. And if you have people around you that constantly encourage you in those moments of failure, then that will keep you going further than where you are. So just getting around people that have the mindset of, you know, yeah, you're going to fall down. That's fine. All right, let's get back up and let's figure out what we're going to do next. Yeah. Um, along that line, uh, this is not what, at some level, it is what I wanted to do when I was a kid. In eighth grade, I'm old. Um, a, they used to call it commercial art, what we call graphic art at this time. I thought I wanted to do that and left it in, entirely. Uh, did a lot of things. I came out of financial services, started a different company uh, that didn't quite work out, but I built my first website to do that. People asked me about websites, and that's how I actually began doing this as a job. I could have done much more sooner had I not had to do it alone. Having a community that will help you will help you go further faster. And you know, I guess that's one of those old black proverbs as well. You know? But uh, it's an opportunity to do it in this community. So the person who's tried and considering a career change, well, you can find people in Black Rest Group who've gone through the same thing, or uh, who want to learn, learn a little bit more about design because they you know, really can't tie their shoes when it comes to picking colors. There's people who will. Uh, help with that too. So definitely, I think there's the opportunity for collective growth in collective organizations like this. And we hope that we'll join you. You'll join us, right? Because we want you. Algo mas? Contentos? Okay, then. Thank you very much. <laughs>